Okay, this is again to take a look at how some of the views have changed, have evolved over the years. And historical, there is disruptive stability, which is goes back to stability was kind of the rule. Yep. And the change itself was often independent, though there was some sequential. So, for example, sometimes a major change would require some prerequisites, which would be done as a separate change initiative. But they were thought really being linear in, in sequence. Uh, yep. That, and currently, though, we're really managing more of a portfolio of change. Uh, companies recognize that there's multiple changes going on. And the focus then is how do you manage multiple things at one time? looking at uh, time and resource uh, conflicts. So it's more of keeping multiple things going. To some extent, there's still some independence, but for the most part, the focus is on uh, prioritization. And then gets more into where, I'm, where Reg and I are focusing our attention is the evolving view is change agility. I'm hesitant here with agility because Agile has contaminated that word so much, uh, but I'm trying to use it as flexibility. Um, change flexibility, responsiveness. Uh, maybe let me change that to responsiveness. Because again- um, uh, It's nimbleness, it's nimbleness, isn't it? Say, say again? Nimbleness, maybe. Um, yeah, nimbleness, yeah, let me see. I mean, agility is okay, but it just, you're, you're right. It, it, it's, it's, um, you just got to, it, it is a, a loaded word now. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's really been, it, it's almost a fad where everybody is trying to jump on the agile wagon and it's being used in ways that it shouldn't. Yeah, let me change nimbleness. That, that, that fits better because again, that gives the, the feeling of agility without having to get into the baggage that that word has. Yeah. Uh, then it's operating with a continuous change. And this is where we're trying to get into the change responsibilities to really need to be distributed because there's too much going on at one time. So it's yep. got routine adaptation. But then the key is this point here is that to really do that, it's not just a prioritization. It's getting into purpose alignment, network weaving to align and prioritize the efforts. So it's more than just prioritizing the changes themselves as much as it is to get the purpose alignment so that the change is, is then aligned within that framework. Okay. Any, other, any other thoughts, word changes? So let's think about this. So why why can't why can't the no that's all right I'm, I'm good I, I was just wondering I was just trying to think of the, I, the counter a, a counter example do you really need purpose alignment but you kind of do you, you yeah. can't you, you know you can't you can't kind of evolve in your own direction yeah the purpose alignment yeah purpose alignment is is really kind of the, the guardrails to keep things from going too crazy yeah, so I, I agree with that. And yeah. network, do you really need network weaving or can it happen without network weaving? I don't know. It absolutely requires purpose alignment at a, at a, at a, yeah. uh, at a granular level. Network weaving really is an outcome of the prioritization and purpose alignment. Um, and the only reason I throw, I'm throwing it in there is that this is laying the foundation for more things that come later where network weaving is a critical part. Um, let me think, though. Yeah, I'm still thinking network weaving because, again, you can't really do prioritization on the resource allocation. And for the most part, that's network weaving, making the connections, moving the people around as necessary. Yeah, okay. Sure, uh, sure. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm pretty fine with it. I'm pretty happy with it. Oh, it's yeah. just, I mean, network weaving is your own kind of purpose alignment is very generic. Yeah. Network weaving is your kind of own one. So that's that's okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's that's fine. Yeah. That's kind we're, of what it's saying. It's important. Where network weaving is actually used the most 
and as a term is in the uh, nonprofit arena. Uh, a lot of nonprofits are focused on network weaving on how to uh, connect different nonprofits for mutual benefit. Uh, so that's that's an active that's an active area within that arena. Okay, okay I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you do take a look at network weaving, that's where I see it most. Is, and there's been a few people that have been very very active in purposeful network weaving. Okay. So like, just 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 to keep going as a counter positive a counter a counterfactual though. So would you say someone like Haya, which has got a you know it's got a, a very vibrant ecosystem, right? Do they have the equivalent of network weaving? Um, they have it built in as part of a um, marketplace for people. So you would say that the marketplace itself and those yeah. mechanisms were smart contracts right. serve the function. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If, so, if network weaving encapsulates that, that market, that market function, then I, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. Right. And, and what they basically do is they, they make it more of a, a transparent operation so that people can vote with their feet for where they see the best opportunities. Yeah, yeah, and get and get rewarded, and it's highly entrepreneurial. It's, it's, right, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. right. But yeah, you, I, would, you would you would classify that ecosystem platform thing with the market and the smart contracts as a, as a form of network weaving. Yeah, I mean, you know, Hire's got a great model, but it boy, it's, it's kind of out there is how to bridge to some of those things. Like the market, uh, the marketplace is an issue. The bigger challenge with the higher ecosystem is the PL for each micro enterprise. That requires uh, a dynamic contracting process. Yeah, for yeah. yeah very, very difficult. Uh, okay, then. Well, it's not really. I mean, you can, you can create a smart contract nowadays on, on a, in a blockchain or something without too much effort. I mean, it does. It is a big paradigm shift. Okay, talk to me more about how you do dynamic transfer pricing over time. Your your thoughts there? Um, okay. Good. Yeah, no, I know. I know. You're saying, I know. I know yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, but, 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 so, well, so. With Hire's model, basically what they're doing is they're saying, as you said, that there's a there's a, a bidding process. So they they put up, they say, right, you yeah. know, we're going to need. Um, uh, yeah, the, that that bidding process can work in the marketplace for the people. Okay, um, let, let me jump back to their contracting. Okay, what we do know is that each microenterprise has its own PL and has an internal marketplace with contracts between microenterprises. Yeah. Those are standard, uh, almost third party type of contracts for delivery and uh, pricing arrangements. There is what's called a template that yeah. is available for new startup microenterprises. So when a new microenterprise starts up or a new relationship is established, there is a template that they can build on. And Hire is real open with promoting their management system. And there's actually uh, one company almost full time trying to sell it now as a consulting to other companies and another that promotes it uh, as one of their key, you know, key platforms. But nowhere is there any indication of what that contract actually looks like and neither of those two companies have anything or and when you ask them about it they don't respond and when you try to find out what those contracts look like you run into a huge brick wall of this is proprietary Okay. They don't want to share that process. And here's where it's, where it's key. You can come up with a negotiated contract. That's not the problem. Okay. The challenge is how that contract needs to evolve over time. Because if there is a change, the change is not going to impact both parties in a relationship equally. Chances are that 
one side is going to incur more of the cost and the other side incur more of the benefits. Yeah. So there needs to be some type of dynamic pricing mechanism that recognizes that the value balance can change over time because you're, you're doing the change for mutual benefit of the totality. Okay. But that distribution across the microenterprise network isn't always balanced without that dynamic pricing mechanism. Uh, as far as I know, as far as I know, it's very much a live or die type of thing. If your microenterprise lives, then you can, if it does well, then the, the, the founders of the microenterprise will do very well and, and higher tax cut doesn't, you die, it gets killed and you get, you get kind of like a, a basic wage for three months for you to find another job with inside higher, yeah. otherwise yeah. you're out. Yeah. But, but that but that, but that but in terms of your, your your transfer pricing and everything like that i i don't know i've yeah. i'm also trying to find uh, i'm also it's boundaryless and and what's his name and um, i mean they're, they're quite nice blokes um um but i i've actually asked to get a hold of the contract i haven't been i haven't seen it either yeah um, i try to kind of reverse engineer what it would look like a bit and i'm but then, then i'm also looking at things like um you know there's the smart contracts that are going inside these distributed autonomous organizations in the crypto world. Okay. And then they can look in, 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 and so the DAOs, you know, the distributed. So basically what they're saying is that why don't we put the governance rules inside a, a rules engine? And, and also part of that rules engine is that the community can vote on the rules, on the change of those. So you sort of okay. democratize yeah. the organization. Yeah. Of course, of course, you know, there's flaws there as well because if if you're a major investor, then you get more voting rights, and therefore you can you can skew the voting rights. To, you know, so I, I think that I think the DAOs, the distributed autonomous organisations, are going to going to find that good old fashioned human greed and everything is going to end up taking over there. But the mechanisms of creating smart contracts now, you can pretty much go on GitHub and get you know contract rules and 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 try to do it. So if you wanted to do it inside an organisation. And without getting, you know, I mean, you're never going to get a perfectly balanced and, and dynamic um, yeah. transfer mechanism, price transfer mechanism. Yeah. But yeah. It, 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 it may enable that autonomous network weaving to happen. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, all, it's all pretty cutting edge stuff and I haven't got my head fully around it. Okay. Well, the way I think that it is possible, and this is, this is just my guess, is that it becomes a dynamic negotiation that when you enter into a change situation they reevaluate how the value is generated where the cost and where the benefits are and they renegotiate effectively a new contract pricing mechanism but to do that you need to have full transparency on both sides not only the PL but how that PL benefit is distributed because okay. once you have that, then you can't hide your personal benefit because it's all out in the open. And with that, you can have a realistic negotiation because you get down to talking about who's generating value, where's that value going, who's benefiting in the, in the long run. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, that's so basically that's awesome. part, of the, part of the contract is a, is a profit transparency. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So dynamic negotiation with full transparency on both sides works, but whether that's what higher does or not, I don't know. That's just my guess. Okay. <clears throat> Let's jump back then. Um, this yeah. last part then. This comes from something that Reg and I had uh, done oh, about a year and a half ago. And that is a framework for change that we need now. And these are five kind of bullet points, that, which are kind of high level of driving change. Um, and again, this is laying the foundation for the, the principles that are to come. Uh, but I'm just basically putting it within an introduction framework at this point. Okay. Any, any thoughts as to that the wording the flow. All right, cross organizational purpose alignment with distributed decision making. Right. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Entrepreneurial mindset, effectuation, okay. and guidelines for decision making. Agree. Okay. Off control from tensions between operating principles. What's that mean? 
Well, this gets back to the issue of control and bureaucracy. It's generally a hard control through the delegation of authority within the hierarchy. When you do away with the hierarchy and you try to eliminate the hard level of control, there's still some necessity for control so that things don't fly out of hand. So for example, if you give people distributed um, decision rights, they can run without any guidelines in any direction that they want. So there needs to be some guidelines. And those, uh, those guardrails then come from other principles. So for example, uh, purpose alignment is in tension with distributed decision-making. And the decision-making process itself is, if, is within the framework of the effectuation principles so that there's guidelines as to how to make decisions. So there's really a soft internal tension such that the control is there, but it's built within the principles in conflict with each other such that one side doesn't go too crazy versus another. Yeah. Now, whether there's a better way of saying that, uh, that that's explained later. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I, I kind of get what you're saying. He's just saying that you know, the control mechanism, the government structure has got to allow ambiguity to, to flourish, but there's a point yeah. where it, 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 can't, it can't allow it to... Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's integrated into chaos. Yeah, you're you're trying to eliminate the sharpness and the negativity that comes with control mechanisms, but you cannot eliminate it totally. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair enough. I, I, that's fair enough. Okay. Okay. I got you. Yep. Network weaving to evolve the structure and address bound bound. Yep. Sure. And basic okay. change competency. What's basic basic change competency mean? <sighs> If, if distributed decision-making and change responsibility is across the organization, everybody needs to know at least a, some basics of change competency. But whether it's change competency or uh, soft skills, uh, I see, that's why I said especially the soft skills. Again, okay, <clears throat> if you take an organization, the lower levels are used to taking direction and implementing what they're being told to do. If you enable them then to make their own decisions within a framework of purpose and guidelines for decision-making, they still need some soft skills that they're not currently using. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna just gonna just gonna completely. I'm gonna try to tell you what I'm doing at the moment, right? And 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 you and, and then you map it back. Because what I'm trying to do is I am trying to I am trying to activate um, some dramatic change about making you know tens of thousands of people across the world much more agile. And when I say agile, I'm talking about the IT. So we're actually talking about IT agility, right? So it's, okay. it's agile delivery processes. And they've been going now for three years with a whole bunch of, you know, your usual consultants and they, those consultants have put in frameworks and it's, nothing's working and nothing's happening and everything like right. that. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm saying, well, you, you don't want to be, dependent on external consultants to tell you how to organize yourself you need to take you need to become competent yourself right, right? exactly and so what i'm going to do and my, my team are going to do is we're firstly going to we're going to probably reset you and going to going to really get you to understand at a very fundamental level what the the, the foundations the core principles of being agile are all about right, right. at the moment i've been talking about the the, the difference between a, a product um, own, a product orientation versus project orientation and how it's funded and all that type of stuff. But that, at the moment, they're trying to be product managers, but they're running the thing like a project. They're funding it like a project. So, you know, you don't, in a project, you go and build a house and then the contractors go away and you pay the contractors and that's it. 
Right. If you're delivering a product to an IT system, it's much more like you're building a product, a service. So you need to have, you need to budget you need the building of it, the incremental improvement of it, the servicing of it, as long as that product's relevant. It's like, you know, if you're an Apple, you know, Apple iPhone or something, you've got iWatch there. So it's a product. You've got to have that product mindset. Now, that's one of the principles I'm trying to bake in. Now, then they go, well, yeah, there's nothing, nothing, yeah, but we keep getting blocked. And so the other thing in order for me to say, in order for you to really change this, we're going to have to, you're going to, you know, I, I'm trying to create a network, like a, a network of internal, internal change agents. I'm going to teach these internal ch change agents. They're not external, they're, they're people are in the company, people who, who, who see themselves having a career in the company, not like me, are going to come and go. So I'm going to, I'm going to bake into the, you know, work with them to really get their agile skills up. But I'm also going to teach them for those who are kind of the, the adaptive leadership um, uh, uh, disposition. Right. And, that is, and that is that you're trying to, you know, your job as a leader is to activate the, 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 the collective intelligence of the group. You're not there to tell them what to do. Uh, you're there. To, you have to really hold. You have to be persistent. You have to keep going. You have to try to break down barriers. You have to be willing to break things. You have to be able to upset people. So it's a type of leadership. Now that's right. part of that's the entrepreneurial mindset which you've got. Yeah. But I think I think we're missing. Now it may be that this uh, my job is a lot bigger than other other jobs. But I think you need this kind of this really distributed leadership, strong leadership, change leadership. People who, who are willing to to break things and to to smash up political alliances and to restructure things, I, I would even say basic. I'd say reasonably reasonably strong. Uh, you know, yeah, just yeah. And so it's, to me, it's that it's that leadership. And I'm I'm when I use when I use the word leadership, are you familiar with Heifetz's adaptive leadership model? You must be. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I I teach and yeah. train and live and breathe the Heifetz leadership model, right? So the yeah. idea of creating holding environments, the idea of deliberately disappointing people, profoundly disappointing people, you know, and the idea of holding, keeping pressure yeah. on until the new, until the people do the work, not not the change agent. Yeah. Let me let me and go ahead and drop. Work. Yeah, let me drop the change competency because really what I'm getting to is more than just change competency. Um, basic leadership skills, is that sufficient or do I need more explanation in there, do you think? I, I, I think it's, it's, I think it's basic. I think it's, it's, it's reason, I think it's reasonably strong um, and, but it's, and, and it's and distributed. It's at, it's at, at, at all critical nodes, at every critical node in, in the organ, or multiple critical, wherever you need to do change, you need, you need to have um, people who are doing it. And so what, what I'll do is I look for, I don't look for, the, I don't work with the existing managers. I look for people who are, are natural influencers, who've got natural kind of, you know, informal authority in the organisation. Yeah. They, they could be a tech techo, they could be a, you know, project manager, and, and you get them and you say, buddy, let's, let's do this. And that's how I work, right? And, 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 and it's pretty effective, right? So I've been pretty, pretty, pretty successful at this kind of way of going, going through it. Okay. I'm still, I'm still kind of wordsmithing here. It says yeah. leadership and relationship skills. That goes a little bit beyond just the leadership, but the, the communication, the interpersonal, the organization behavior. Is that getting closer? I think so. I, I think, and I think leadership. I, I think leadership is very good. And yeah. but you know, one of the things that you know I really try to emphasize is that leadership can happen at a very small level, even, even in a small little pod and a small little thing. Yeah. We can see leadership. So it's, yeah. it's one of those things. Leadership is a practice, not as a job. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. And then I think, you got, I think you got it. I think we're on the same mind. Yeah. And but it's the words, it's the words which, unless yeah. you, you know, every, yeah. agile leadership is as loaded as agile is. I mean, it's a funny word, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and again, this needs to be somewhat general because it's still part of the introduction, but kind of lay the groundwork. 
Sure, sure. Okay, and then at the, bo at the bottom of each of these, I tried to give some type of reflective questioning or something that lays the stage for what's to come. And this then starts to think about, okay, what do you need to do different than we're doing now? And how do you do that? Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Hey, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, there's, what, there's missing. Structural operating, but there's a mindset as well. There's a mindset. Uh, ooh, you're, yeah, let me think. Uh, because without the mindset, yeah. you know, I, I hate that word as well, but uh, unfortunately yeah. it's used, but it, 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 it used correctly. Um, and the mindset I'm talking about is that mindset of, of being dissatisfied with the status quo and being willing to change things, being willing to try things, being willing to fail and being willing to, you know. Okay. That kind of picks up the structural and operation, but also includes the mindset. And is it a portfolio change or is it distributed change? If we're managing a portfolio change to, oh, yeah, okay, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, much better. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what I'm trying to do is bounce it off of you and others at this level before I open it to a wider discussion. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's, that's, that's great. Okay, that's all I had for today. Uh, Anything else on on your agenda or your what you're working on? Oh, it's a bit ill formed. It's a bit ill formed, but um, let, let me let me um, let me see if I can uh, chair my mind. So, I I come I, as you probably know what. I, I try to look at complex adaptive systems and look at the way, you know, mainly living systems and how living systems as, as computational energies, uh, entities make decisions and things. So one of the things I've been looking at is um, cell development pathways in the human body, in, in mammals and complex organisations. And, okay. and so what happens is you've got genes, you know, like you've got, a, you know, you've got an embryonic stem cell and out of that, that, that one cell you get you get these multiple different pathways. So you get, right. you know, and so there's different combinations of proteins, signal proteins and, and whatnot will create a heart muscle or an eye muscle or an ear muscle or whatnot. Now, up until recently, we thought that this was a kind of a one-to-one -one mapping that, you know, particular genes would then be activated in a kind of a, you know, a linear circuit, you know, like, right. like a circuit diagram. Right. As it got to a certain size, something would happen in the cell would then differentiate, then it would become a, a heart or a kidney or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they thought that it was like when they're trying to design it, this is the synthetic biologist, they went, okay, well, it, it looks like there's this, you know, this the circuit diagram, you know, and, and the cells make decisions. And then they started trying to understand the logic behind that. And they went, well, actually, you know. It's not really like a circuit diagram because you've got proteins smashing into each other and bumping inside a cell and you know all this all this messy stuff. But somehow all this mess and chaos can create a really robust organism. And, they, and what they found is that, that the cell, the, the genes, and the proteins don't have a one-to-one -one relationship to them. They don't. They're not a nice little hierarchy. But there are certain very very important um, proteins. That are promiscuous, right? So they they bind because it, the way cells communicate to each other is like they bind that one protein binds to another, and then to another one, and they right. build up. A cell. But there are certain there are certain proteins that are promiscuous. They bind to different receptors, right? So they, you know, one of them will bind to that, and, one, and the same one will bind to that one, and, and and then when that one will bind to that one, that one will bind to that one, and that'll create something. And these, these binding and it's and these, these promiscuous relationships are the ones, are the things we seem to create, enable a small amount of genes to create a wide diversity. Okay. Of organs. And so I'm trying to make a parallel and saying, well, actually, kind of what, isn't that what we need? 
with our organization structures. We don't need like these one-to-one -one relationships between managers and people. Right. We, need, we need promiscuous relationships. And so, you know, and it came up the other, I've been thinking about it. And like, we've got this problem in that at the bank, they've got all these legacy systems. And um, those legacy systems, you've got certain skills. Mm -hmm. And so you imagine you could think of right, the old IBM and the, the hard coding and they're trying to, you know, they're trying to turn that into something else. But whilst the IBM is still going and converting it, you really need people who know the IBM skills, the IBM code plus the new code. Now, if, you, if, if you're pretty political and you know that this is your project, you're going to grab one of those, one of those legacy guys, you're going to put him, you're going to fund him, and you're going to put him in your team. But the other team is going, well, we, can't, we don't have them. We, we, we can't get a hold of this, this, this SME. I go, mean, well, actually, what should really happen is that we should be identifying people like these SMEs and allowing them to have promiscuous relationships with multiple divisions. And the, so the idea is that, you know, that they, they might be instead of funded by, um, you know, just one division or one thing, that these the SMEs or certain people that have got skills that can be relevant in different things are funded by, are partly funded by multiple divisions and their job, and, and they have to act much more like a, a, an emergency doctor in, a, in a, an emergency theatre. So they call from here to call from airport to there. But it's just the idea that instead of saying, I need this skill set and putting it in a, in a thing, what about we need, you know, these people need these rare skill sets. And so how do we create promiscuous relationships that people can move around inside an organization, do a little bit of work there and move around it and do this type of thing. Now, it's just a really rough, rough idea, but I'm trying to get the idea, like if we think about organizational structures as, as being able to, to couple and decouple and decouple and you have you and you know as an employee, you're 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 not going to have an alliance to a single team, but you're going to move from you're going to move from right. place to place to place, quite fluidly, quite promiscuously, and you're going to create promiscuous relationships outside of your silos. Then maybe that kind of logic can can help accelerate information flow because that's what it's about. It's about accelerating information flow, and so that's just an idea that's been tossing around. Okay. Um, um, deliberately using the word promiscuous because this is this is the biologist's word because it's a bit provocative, you know. Like, what, what about how do you have some promiscuous relationships inside organisations? Yeah. Um, it's just, it's um, okay. On the biological say, uh, scale, okay, it's basically out of multiple interactions, some are some are selected over others at individual circumstances. It's, it's good, it almost seems random. It right. Almost seems right. Random. Well, uh, but so, 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 to, so, yeah, let me, let me, well, let me get that. Uh, the, the relationship interactions may be random, but given the, the background, the background environment, would select different ones. So, for example, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so, so uh, let's just say these are two different proteins, right? Okay. And this, these proteins will bind. If that protein will bind to that guy, and that protein will bind to that guy. But, but this one, they won't bind. Like, like these, right. these two won't bind, right? Right. And so I always thought that this is going to be like you have, you have to have these receptors. But what happens is that these certain by binding with that, you now create that can create another entity. If it binds with that one, it can create an entity. Right. And somehow, somehow we don't understand the logic, but somehow this 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 um, these promiscuous these particular guys are promiscuous. These guys aren't. They can't they can't bind. But these these, these ones can bind, and right. through their combination, they can and and, and really, if you, if you understand this, then we can start to create a whole new biological. Right. Entities, and this is kind of the thinking that we need behind the mRNA virus, by the way. Okay, uh, taking that then into organizations where you've got um, resource allocation in your situation. Yeah. What, ty what types of, you know, well, I, I could understand the the relationship, the multiple possibilities. Um, but there's still some embedded decision rule of going one way or another. 
uh, that's that's happening at the cellular level that if you take that by extension to the organization it may also happen but you know, what is that that's happening have, have you gotten to that point in your thought process other, other than enabling the process so Where I'm thinking is, let's just say if that if, if that's a mechanism that we think that could be valuable, then instead of waiting for a division to go, we need one of those. Let's go and recruit them because they're rare. You go to the organ, you go to the organisation and you go, let's get a pool of these, these SMEs. Let's recruit. We don't know where they're going to go. We don't know where they're going to go. Let's, let's let's recruit them, put them in the organisation, and let them float around until they bind. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. I. Right. Um, that is. Uh, that's in use in some places already. Yes. Is it? Yes. Um, I, oh, the example doesn't come to mind, but it's uh, it's similar to hire and a few other organizations where there's an internal marketplace, and people are be able to vote with their feet as to where they see the best opportunity for them to fit as an opportunity for them to, uh, to benefit personally. The, that requires a communication process that establishes the ability to make those relationships. But then there's also, uh, to make it work then also is some type of, it, it's, it's almost like a, an internal marketplace where the resource moves, but the part of the organization that's losing that resource is somehow also benefiting from that shift for having uh, developed or even hired that resource in the first place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, for example, if you if you hire someone from a personnel agency, okay, they get a fee uh, for finding that person bringing it to your attention yeah 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 okay so you're transferring some of the value back to the original person you not. yeah okay right yeah 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 so i mean that yeah, so, this, so this, this 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 resource is hired by this one but then decides to go to find that one promiscuous yes but this one still gets a reward hey, that's fine i've got a reward that's good i'm okay i'll, I'll get my you know i yeah. get a share of that that whatever yeah, yeah. Okay. You're yeah. gonna share. You're gonna share that benefit, and that gives them a head start then to replace that resource, or to make a decision at that point that the prioritization just doesn't exist relative to the balance of other opportunities in the organization, and they put their activity into a, a slow speed or a stop. And the other way to think about it is also, let's just say these, these guys are already bound. And this this one, this this is this is a legacy system. They're going to go out and you don't want to fire the whole team. But what you almost want to do is you almost want to train these guys to become more fungible, right? So, so you can say, well, once that's over and you know, we, we collapse oh. the IBM or whatnot, right. you know, you know the business, but we kind of want you, we want you around. We're not going to throw it because yeah. now your skills get out IBM, you know, PHP and this, you know, how do we help you um, detach and reattach in the future thing? So that you're, you know, you know that once you yeah. finish the project, then, because you know, especially when you get to an end, end of life thing, these guys are going, oh, I think we might need to, we might need to crank this feature up. We might, we might need to extend our contract. Yeah. Whereas actually what you want them to do is to decouple. Yeah. And so it's this, this coupling and decoupling of, 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 of people and, 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 um, you know, if, if people are the equivalent of proteins and you get certain proteins are highly promiscuous, then, um, and, you know, maybe something, maybe we can learn about that. Maybe the, yeah. maybe the, yeah. maybe the, the, the organizations can, can learn about, because, you know, every time I, go, you know, I walk in, you know, I've got yeah. 50 floors of, of bank and every floor I go to, 
you know, I go and have a little coffee state and they're talking about, oh, you were losing this person now, you know, wish we could just hang on to people or whatever. It's just like, you know, it's just, it's crazy. And it's because the project will finish and then they, they'll be fine and then they have to recruit them. So there's right. this mentality of saying, well, this, this, this funding stops here, then we just let them go. Whereas, you know, that's the right hand, of the, but the left hand of the organisation is desperately trying to fight to hire talent. Just yeah. going, this is, you, yeah. just, um, you know, you're just crazy. Yeah. The way, the way higher does it is that they have a micro enterprise that's built around this function for uh, basically outplacement. So I said, when a project terminates, the people, if they don't already have a path into another uh, micro enterprise, can go into an outplacement and be generating some compensation there while looking for other opportunities in the organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Which, is, which is a standard type of thing if you're doing a reduction in force. Oftentimes you'll hire an outplacement firm that will give them uh, some resume and job placement assistance while they're looking, but it's a limited period of time before there is a severance. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it, is, a, it is a way to do way to do it so you don't actually lose them and you help them find something uh, better and there's that's a safety net for them yeah 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 yes yeah. yeah, so that's that's a good point in, in some ways you're encouraging those people to be promiscuous to move from micro enterprise to micro enterprise and you're creating the environment for them to 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 allow that promiscuity okay uh where are you in your thinking on moving this idea from the cellular to the organization level to implement it oh no no, no. I'm, I'm talking about I, I, re I read about this a few weeks ago and i'm just tossing around in my head it's, okay it's really okay. just very very early stages very early okay. stages okay yeah um, and that's why i said it's very ill form i'm just i'm just because i'm what i'm what i'm trying to do is is trying to you know like biological systems have got these great computational yep. mechanisms that we can learn from and i'm yep. just trying to say how what can we learn from these yeah um Years ago, well, not, not that long ago, but I got a lot of my insight from Stuart Kaufman. Ah, oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, he, he's basically an evolutionary biologist. Yeah. And is looking at something similar to what you're looking at with, with new eyes of how complexity actually really works. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting area. So keep, keep us informed as you go down that line, or if you've got any uh, references you could lead us to, uh, to bring us up to speed too. Uh, because I think, yeah, okay. because again, what you're doing is you're getting down into how complexity works at a cellular level, yeah. which if, if you've got insights there, then you can figure out how it might work at a social level. That's right. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, and I'm looking at. I'm going. Well, a living organism is a computational entity, and, and, and a and a um, and, and an organization is a computational entity. And you know, how can we? How can these? You know, we're so our, the stuff that makes us up is so adaptive and so amazing. Right. That there must be some tricks in there that we can apply. And that's that's kind yeah. of what I'm just... Yeah. Just uh, yeah. Keep us informed on that. And again, if you've got any references, I'd like to uh, look at them also because I, I like the direction you're going and I wasn't aware of the research at that cellular level that you've, you're have you referring to. Yeah. So so whenever I get a thought like this, I usually try to fly, I, I kick it out in my little blog, which I'm pretty sure you can post bureaucracy. Okay. Blog. I, I, okay. I haven't written anything for about six months because I've been so busy on this assignment. Okay. Um, but I, I, I've started drafting it. Uh, but yeah, but I, I will. And, you know, that's why I really try to make this little meeting because it's, I think it's a, it's a nice little meeting of minds. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. De definitely want to follow up on this. Okay. Uh, anything, anything else for today then? No, no, that's good. That's good. I'm going to prepare for my next one. That's, uh, you know, short and sweet. Okay, you have a good week, and I uh, hope to catch you next Thursday then. Okay, Ross. Cheers. Bye-bye.